the range mapper is one of the most useful nodes you can use in Expresso. And if you're using a lot of Expresso, you will be using the range mapper about 90% of the time. So I'm just going to explain what it does and uh, how it can be used practically. In a nutshell, it's basically very useful for uh, converting from one type of units to another. So in this example, I want to basically uh, convert position units into rotation units. So I set up this uh, kind of fake slider. And as I slide this um, sphere along this line, I want it to basically rotate this cube, say along um, bank like that. So someone might just create an Expresso tag and just link them directly. So I'm just going to try that. So I'm going to bring in my cube at the end here because it's been driven. And we want to control its banking. So I'm just selecting B. I'm not selecting rotation because that's basically a vector consisting of three coordinates. And this way we just get one uh, value consisting of degrees. And my sphere is going to drive rotation. And I'm using the spheres. Let's have a look x position. So I'm going to go to coordinates position global position x like that. So what happens when we directly link these? Let's try it. So it kind of works but I've just got no control over this rotation. It's spinning like crazy and um, I basically want to I want it to do a 360 degree rotation from here to here. So I want it to start at zero, and then by the time my sphere is about here, I want it to rotate 360 degrees. So how can I do that? So I'm just going to go back to my Expresso editor, break that link, and I'm just going to search for the range mapper. So there it is under calculate. I'm just going to drag that in. And this is the panel with all our options. So my input is my sphere's x position, so input range is um, user defined because none of these apply. It's not degrees, it's not radians, and it's not percent. So I'm just going to leave that at user defined. And the output range is the global rotation banking of my cube, so that will be degrees. I'm just going to select degrees. So let's have a look. Um, so sphere, when it's at about, say here, that's about minus 300 for X and then 300 is the upper limit. So basically from here to here, I want this cube to spin 360 degrees only. So basically my input lower is going to be minus 300 X units and my input upper is going to be 300 X units. And my output lower is 0 and output upper is 360. So that is already how I want it. So I'm just going to link this like that and see if it worked. And as you can see now, it's working. It's only spinning 360 degrees in that range. And uh, one thing to notice, basically it continues to spin even after 300, which is what I defined. So if you want to stop that, we can go back to the range mapper and you can choose clamp. So clamp lower and upper. And now, once we get to 300 units, as we defined it, it stops spinning. So it only spins within the range that we defined. So that's a very useful option. So we're basically mapping uh, minus 300 X units to zero degrees, and then we're mapping 300 X units to 360 degrees. So um, I hope you kind of you can grasp how that works. And if we check reverse, it basically just does the same thing, but now it's spinning in the opposite direction. So it's spinning counterclockwise, and if we uncheck reverse, it's spinning clockwise. Uh, I think it basically just makes this minus 360. It's the same as doing that. Yep. And uh, one last thing. Uh, you'll notice this graph here. So 
right now our um, rotation is linear so basically there's no easing it's just a we're getting basically a direct linear conversion between these values but uh, if I kind of choose a different type of curve we've got some spline presets we could try a cubic so basically here it's going to start off rotating very slowly and then it's going to speed up towards the end so let's try that and as you can see yeah, it's definitely easing in and then it gets faster towards the end So you can basically draw a curve which defines the rate at which these kind of get uh, mapped to each other. And we could also do some kind of bell curve. So um, theoretically, I'm just going to delete this node, maybe this point as well. Uh, this should kind of start spinning one way and then the other way. So you could make some pretty uh, complicated kind of rigging setups with this technique. So that's a very basic introduction to the range mapper. Uh, any questions, just ask me below and thanks for watching.